Hello, everybody. This is Philip Carter. Thank you so much for joining us on our first broadcast. Uh, I'm excited. This is a new venture for me, but I praise God for the opportunity. Uh, so listen, this is the first show, so bear with me what we do. And I want you to know that if you have any comments or suggestions on how we can improve our show, you can email me at realtalkwithphilipcarter at yahoo.com. That's realtalkwithphilipcarter at yahoo.com. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of exciting guests today. We have Pastor Terry White joining us from the Fellowship Center in Beltsville, Maryland. We have Reverend Willie B. Allen, who is a legend and an icon in the DMV area. And we have my brother, Andre Jones, who has taken this area by storm. And if you're going to call anybody to help you with your music, he's the one to call. But right now, we're going to um, watch a video by me and my group that we uh, taped a while back. It's a, it's a video called A Friend Unfailing. Enjoy. Oh, bless his name, yeah. Oh, bless his name. Christ alone will guide us when the storms betide us. For he alone is every He's every day the same For none but He can keep us When the billows they sweep us For He's a friend unfailing I'm going to bless his name all the way to heaven. Hallelujah. Please let our best be given. Oh, ever let his glory let it be our more than yonder he will meet us and it's with a smile jesus will greet us can i get a witness in him for he's a friend unfailing and I'm going to bless his name I don't know about you but I'm going to bless for he alone to save us Hallelujah, he freely came. And I want you to know that when the storms be tired us, can I get a witness in him? Jesus will keep and guide us. But Jesus is a friend unfailing. Can I get somebody in here to help me bless his name? Come on, help me. Jesus is a friend unfailing. He's a friend unfailing. 
Hallelujah. He never fails. That's why we bless. For he alone to save us. I thank you, Jesus, that you freely came. Yeah, yeah. When the storms be tired of sometimes you got storms in your life. Financial storms, uh, sickness storms. Uh, won't God, won't God be a father for you in the midst of your storm? When the storms. Hallelujah. Jesus will keep and guide you. Yeah. Hey, for Jesus is a friend unfailing. Woo. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to bless his name. Hallelujah. Yeah, bless his name. Bless his name. Ah, bless his name in the good times and in the bad times. When you're lonely, bless his name. When you're confused, bless his name. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Uh, last year we celebrated 20 years of music ministry and God's been so good to us and uh, that's one of the songs that has brought us through. It was originally written and recorded by uh, Ricky McCrimmon and his brother Danny McCrimmon and they gave us permission some years later to do it over again and God has been blessing us ever since. My guest right now is somebody that I have been watching since I was a little kid uh, growing up with him um, playing for Shirley Berkeley in the GMWA uh, chapter when my father used to take me around. Uh, he is none other than the Reverend Willie B. Allen. Um, he plays at Truth, Righteousness, and Love Ministries. Uh, he's a long-standing member of the GMWA nationally and locally. And he is being honored this year at our Musicians and Singers Fellowship on January the 22nd at the All Saints Banquet and Conference Center in Hyattsville, Maryland. Reverend Allen, how you doing? Good afternoon, sir. I'm I'm doing great. I'm blessed just to be here. Amen. And although you're Reverend, you always tell us to call you Willie because that's what we've been knowing you all our lives. Uh, but I want to give you your kudos. Uh, who is your pastor at Truth, Righteousness, and Love Ministries? Uh, pastor Laurie Brooks is the uh, pastor and, and her husband uh, is the overseer. Right. And you're also well connected with the Ruffin family, right? The Ruffin family, Rodney and, and Regretta Ruffin, Greater New St. Paul in Washington, D.C. Right, right. So listen, let's talk about the early years. Um, what were the early years? What were the early years of life for you? And when did you start? I mean, how did you start playing the piano? Well, uh, brother Phil, coming up in a in a preacher's house, being a, a preacher's kid, um, there was always pianos around. And uh, even uh, in the early years, when I say early, I'm talking five, six, seven years old, uh, at my grandmother's house. We were originally from Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Um, the Bethlehem Baptist Church um, in in Richmond, and wow. um, we actually had a um, a pipe-driven organ and piano in the house. Wow. And uh, my brother, uh, the Reverend Vincent Allen, who's the current pastor of the Upper Room Baptist Church uh, in Washington, we used to take turns um, pumping the pedals, and, and, and he would sit on the stool and play the keys, and then I would play the keys, he'd pump the pedals. Uh, <laughs> and we'd switch over to the other side of the living room and, and kind of go up and down the keyboard. So we 
we've always been driven to, uh, and I've always been driven to the piano uh, and the organ instruments uh, at that at that early age. Even, you know? So we said for about five to seven years old, you started playing the piano. Yes, wow. So who were some of your early mentors in music ministry? Well, coming up um, um, back in those days, um, um, the Lord blessed me to to cross paths with, uh, needless to say, the the one and only right now, uh, Shirley Make Berkeley. Um, and of course, along with her came Theodore King and I remember um, uh, uh, Brother Henry Davis. And wow! Of course, uh, Richard, the, the renowned Richard Smallwood, legends, um, and various other groups. Uh, Bernard Mavery with the original yeah. Cal- Tabernacle Echoes. Um, uh, Mabel Ray back in the day was one of the uh, old DC organ players. You know, out of the Jerusalem Baptist Church. Uh, and uh, Henry Mansfield was one of the great organists of Washington DC back in the day. Uh, he was affiliated with one of the uh, St. Paul churches as well in, in Northeast. Uh, and they were the ones who I had a chance to sit, um, uh, the, the different groups that I used to uh, uh, have a chance to to watch coming to my dad's church, um, the Tabernacle Echoes, the Coleman Ears, um, back in the day, and um, various other groups and in, in local. I didn't have a lot of gospel back then. Um, um, of course, the radio stations we had then was pretty much uh, WST. Uh, Cal Hackett. Right, right, uh, right. Back, back in the day. Uh, that was before my time, I believe. Yeah, way before your time. I was yeah, born in 75, yeah, yeah, so yeah, when was way, Cal Hackett way. on the radio? Uh, he was back in 60, 64, 3. Right, back, right. Back then, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've heard a lot of yeah, people talk about him. Yeah, he was yeah, sick, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, no, he's doing he's doing well now. He's, doing I, well I, now. I, I have, yeah, he's, he's in Baltimore. Uh, yeah. Uh, Maryland Public Television, matter of fact. Right, right. I remember you going around doing uh, workshops, playing the piano for Shirley Brown. Oh, absolutely. And I was like, man, this guy can play. We traveled all over the country. Oh, know, it was unbelievable. Know, and I, you know, I thank God for my dad taking absolutely. me around to see absolutely. all these people. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Um, How did you originally get hooked up with the GMWA? Well, um, being a part of, um, you know, Mother Berkeley, and of course her group back in the day was the Berkeley Singers, the original Berkeley, sing- mm-hmm. Berkeley Singers. And um, one day I was at her house, as many folk have come by her house, the uh, old address, 320 Seaton Place, right. Northeast. Um, and um, a phone call came to the house, um, and it and was by no other than, than the Reverend James Cleveland himself. Is that right? Sharing with her wow. his vision for the Gospel Music Workshop of America. And um, inviting this her. Just before to, it got started? Just before it got started. And invited her to come to California <laughs> for an original meeting Is that you know, right? of the minds. Uh, to see just how they would uh, sort out putting it together and having the opportunity to be sitting at that table when he called. Of course, when she got back from California, the first thing is, well, we got to put the first chapter together, and that's the D.C. chapter of the Gospel wow. Music Workshop of wow. America. So wow. It kind of threw me right in right in the middle of the whole entire process of putting it together. A lot of history there, man. A lot of history there, man. And you were I'm in the room when it got right started. Right in the room, man. That's, right that's in the awesome. Room. Right in the so room. let's, let's, let's uh, switch gears for a minute. Um, you know, everybody knows you you know, as a phenomenal musician, you've been doing things for a long time, um, you know, in the D.C. area and abroad. Um, what are your hobbies? Well, you know, when I'm not uh, in church, um, and of course my career originally um, um, had um, taken a direction to the to the law enforcement okay. uh, arena, okay. uh, part of being part of the Metropolitan Police Department. Um, it's always been that music uh, foundation there. But um, I have a love for automobiles. I'm an antique car person. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I rode motorcycles for the police department, so I kind of got into the two-wheel vehicle scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, other than that, that's 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 pretty much the hobby is, is automobiles. You know, just kind of so antique cars. Antiques, yeah, I have a few now. Yeah, yeah, wow. like '65 uh, Mustang. And, is that right? Yeah, you know. I'm gonna um, come to your house. I need to come yeah. visit you. <laughs> <laughs> They're hanging around for a minute. They don't get a chance to, to uh, take them out too often, but yeah, you know, so uh, just little wow. things like that. So, how do you feel about being honored at the uh, Musicians and Singers Fellowship? I'm uh, I'm 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 super califragilistic, as we all know, just excited, <laughs> you know, about the whole idea of even being uh, invited, you know, uh, being thought about enough to be a part of the process and the newness of of all of the vision that's being put together by yourself and 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 some other renowned. Uh, musicians that you you have become uh, affiliated with and have grown with um, to, um, to to just be able to sit side by side and shoulder to shoulder to some of uh, my counterparts um, uh, that will be you know at that event you know uh, Sister Green and Marina some you know some yeah. of, some of the ones that are actually going to be there you know I I came up with them as well right you know? well it's a, it's definitely so I'm, a, I'm on it. it's definitely an honor to um, that, you know to be able to do this I don't know how it came about the Lord just dropped it in my spirit around about November of 2016, yeah. and, you know, I just said, you know, hey, we're going to come together, and we're going to do this event. We're just going to fellowship and eat and do whatever.
whatever. And, uh, you know, and it's turned into this. And now we're looking at something that's beyond me coming up uh, in two weeks and, 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 you know, in four or five months down the road to the next one. Um, we're looking at some. Hello. And serve musicians and singers, uh, you know, um, as, 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 as much as we possibly can. So uh, in our two minutes that we have left, what advice would you give to young musicians today? Um, to those who, who and, and we see them often uh, as we travel around to the different churches, um, is to, um, to, to dedicate your, your talent and your craft to the work of the Lord, uh, and, and, and not, not only because you can do what you do, but uh, dedicate to yourself as unto God to, to, to be committed to the ministries. One of the things that I have been uh, uh, not so much advised about but uh, brought to my attention that there are not a lot of a lot of you know church rooted grounded musicians. It, it's, it, there, there's a thing that's going uh, along there where musicians, um, a lot of the younger musicians than myself, that is, who are more interested. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it um, in do, in the recording industry being being known, mm -hmm. name being out there. Things, but the church is kind of starving for that committed musician. Um, that can be a part of what's going on in the local church as, as, as under the pastor and, and what you may have to work with there in the church, building the choirs uh, and those kind of things. And, and I would, I would uh, it, to me, the, 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 the root of doing that type of thing uh, kind of starts in the church. You, you hear a lot of the famous musicians and artists, um, when they get to the mic and, and get the Oscars and the Emmys, and say, you know, a lot of them say, I, I started in church. You know, they, they may not have had parents who were ministers and that sort of thing, but they got their start uh, on the church uh, platform. So, you know, learn your craft, you know, get out there and, 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 and ask the questions. Um, um, practice. Practice makes perfect, you know. Um, and uh, don't feel intimidated by other artists. You know, you, know you, you, you are who you are and define who you are. Amen. You know, and let the Lord do the rest uh, from that point, you know. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for the invitation, really sir. Really appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. Y'all, the Reverend Willie B. Allen. Yes, sir. We're getting ready to go to our next video. Uh, my friend and brother, Michael White, and True Praise, he's on one of my labels called Christian Life Music Group. And this uh, song is entitled, My Help. Enjoy. Amen. Thank you. If the Lord had not been on our side, we'd be swallowed alive, tossed by raging waters, overwhelmed when troubles rise against us. But praise to the Lord, He'll never let us be torn from His loving. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Jesus, maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. If the Lord Think about it. If the Lord had been on our side, we'd be swallowed. Oh, yes. Lost my rage and Overwhelmed. Praise to the Lord, He'll never let
My guest right now is none other than the phenomenal Andre Jones. Um, I have watched him grow up in this music industry in this DMV area. And what he is doing right now is nothing short of phenomenal. He is the minister of music of the Life Changing Christian Center in White Plains, Maryland. He also has his own production company called Potter Wheels Productions, LLC. But what I would like to say about Andre Jones, and many, and many people can agree with me, is that he is always willing to help anybody in need. Somebody of his caliber most of the time would be sitting in the back just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. But Andre is one of the ones I have seen to step up to the plate and help people that he don't even know. And so I just want to give him kudos for that. And God has blessed him because of that. Uh, it's the humble that shall be exalted and nobody else. So Andre, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, man. I see you got that Eagles jacket on. We're going to talk about that a little later. Yeah, nah. But <laughs> yeah. Only those that can, are in the playoffs can talk. Uh, or the, in the play. anyway, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, oh, your pastor of Life Changing Crystal Cent Christian Center is Bishop Jason Brownlee. Yes, sir. Uh, powerful man of God. I know he is. Powerful and, man of God, and he's also a musician. So. Is that right? Yes. You hear him talk about music often? Sometimes. Sometimes. Like, he always, like, gets on the organ from time to time and he like schools me a little bit. Is that right? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah. tell me, man, I mean, you know, I met you when you were, you know, I think late teens or whatever, yeah. but how did you get started in this? Pretty much, man. I've always had a passion for music, like, even growing up as a baby. Like, I just used to bang on stuff around the house, you know, pots and pans, you know, I had my little tin can drum set. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to take like, like silverware and bang on it. And from that point, like, and then I got fascinated with the piano. So it started when I was pretty much three years old. Like, we used to always go to North Carolina for our family reunion. And we would go to my aunt's house, and she had an upright piano. And from that time, like, I used to just bang on it and bang on it. And my parents, you know, you know how parents are when you, my bad. So when you, when you with, uh, when you have kids, you know, you tell them not to do stuff. So I didn't listen. So I just got banging, and my aunt kind of influenced it. She was telling my parents <laughs> to let me do it. Yeah. Because it might, I might actually learn how to play it one day, and you know, become something, which has happened. So from that point, you know, I've always just played, and I just always listen to gospel music. I just like always playing. I like practicing every day, even till now. Even now, like I practice every day. I listen to different music, and you know, and I just got started out that way, and. Somebody that knows somebody told them about me. Then Rustin Jackson, you know Rustin Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. The infamous Rustin Jackson. Uh huh. Rustin, <laughs> good guy. You no, know, he called me when I was thirteen to play his live recording. That was my first session. Wow. Like, nervous as Jacks. I can't even lie. So from that point, you know, after that, I started playing for a group called Set Apart. So pretty much, uh, I got to give kudos to Van Shine because Van yeah. Shine was involved with all of this. You know, he put my name out there to get to Jimmy Russell. From Jimmy, you know. It just started opening different doors, you know, yeah. and all that. So. Well, you know, look, that that kind of parlays into my next question. How did you get hooked up with Jimmy Russell and, and you know, and who were the other musical influences, yeah. uh, you know, concerning the early years? So the early years, like, of course, Jimmy Russell and because of Christ, you know, Jimmy Russell is a pinnacle of D.C. Absolutely. Like, every, he knows everybody. He does. Everybody knows him. Not even just in D.C., outside of D.C. GMWA, Jimmy is a GMWA baby for real. For Absolutely. Real, you know. So Jimmy has like pretty much has put my name in other artists' ears when they need help. 
you know, Mike McCoy, yourself included, you know, Kendall King. It's a, it's a lot to name. Like, I really can't even name them all. But, you know, from that point, you know, he just – I just like to uh, – not even just about helping people. I just like to play. Right. You know, I just like to play. That's good. So when I'm called for opportunities, especially when I get to play with a band situation, when I get called for different opportunities, you know, I look at it like this. If I'm not doing anything, why not? Right. You know, and it's not always about the money. But at the same token, you never let anybody take advantage of you. Right. So, so let's talk music. I mean, I, you know, I'm just going to ask you some things that I know, music, you know, only musicians really care about. But what's your go-to uh, keyboard at this point? Keyboard? Yeah. Personally, I am a Nord guy. Is that right? Like, I love the Nord. Like, people think it's just because of the piano sounds. But, mm -hmm. You know, being on tour in Italy for the, like, last month I was in Italy and, like, I actually got to actually explore the board because one time, one show we had, I only had a Nord. Usually I would have a Nord and a motif so I could like stack and do all this and do mm -hmm. all that. But I had a Nord and what many people don't know about the Nord is not just the piano sounds in the board. It has synth sounds, it has string sounds, and it has different ways you can tweak everything. Like you can make a Nord and it has that organ side. So, and you can actually make it sound like a B3. So hopefully so, Nor will hear this so they can give him a, a, I mean, please, a, a please, sponsor, please. Andre Jones. Please, please. I'm a Yamaha guy. Um, you know, I still like the old, I still like the Yamaha with the four patches on it. Uh, when, it when it starts getting past four, <laughs> I start getting confused. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm still a Yamaha guy. So let me ask you this. What advice would you give to uh, young musicians who are trying to get up? You know, you've... you've did the You Deserve It album with uh, J.J. Harrison. You've, you know, you've been a part of some big projects. What advice would you give to young musicians? I mean, um, as as I could piggyback off of what Reverend Willie B. Allen was talking about, pretty much like be yourself. Don't don't try to be like the next guy. Like if you if you have a passion, like my like if you have a passion for something, like let it be used through you. Like don't don't try to be like the next guy just because this person is doing this. Wait your turn. I could always say wait your turn because you know there's a lot of young musicians out here who look up, but they don't see the opposite side of what goes on in the full-time musician's life like the cons and stuff so all they see is the pros like we're on albums we're doing this we're touring but they don't know what's going on behind the scenes like you know when you're missing your family stuff like that so i could definitely just tell young musicians just be yourself wait your turn and stay humble and keep god first in everything you do hey that's awesome advice um my father if it wasn't for my father keeping me humble i don't know where i would be yeah humble, humble. i would not be where i'm at my humble father is the way to go told me, I don't care how big you get, you know, be, be humble and stay low to the ground and God will do the exalting in his time. So that that's great. So let's just shift gears a little bit. You a sports fan? Of course. <laughs> talk, talk close to the mic. You a sports fan, huh? I'm a sports fan. What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport right now would have to be football. Really, really? Not just, just not just NFL, but like college football. Like I'm excited for the game tonight, Alabama and Georgia. So who's going to win? Georgia. Georgia, Georgia's of course. <laughs> I want to see Georgia. I want to see Georgia take it all because it will be nice, something nice for them because they're in their hometown. And, you know, it's the first, it's the first championship game in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Is that right? Yeah, so. Who is your favorite NFL team? My favorite NFL team is the one and only Philadelphia Eagles. Right, right. You said you love Jesus, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves the Eagles because we're in the playoffs. <laughs> he made a way. Is that right? <laughs> Travis Green says you made a way. <laughs> what do you so, think about the, their, their possibilities now that their starting quarterback is, is injured? Uh, our starting quarterback is injured, man. We, we are playing the Atlanta Falcons this week. I'm, I'm actually going to try to go to the game. Is that right? Yes, it's in Philly. So, but with the injured quarterback, you know, it definitely takes a shift. Mm -hmm. But you still got to believe in the rest of the team because you know, I mean, our quarterback now, Nick Foles, he's not the best. But when it's time to show up, he can actually get the job done, and he has proven it time and time again. Right. Just not this season. Right. But, well, man, thank you for coming on. I'm gonna ask you to come back uh, after a while because I wanna, I wanna offer some production tips to people who are, you know, currently. Um, trying to make a go out of it, especially in their house. Yeah. And I would like for you to come back and share with us, some, you know, having a little segment, a little Andre Jones segment. So, uh, you know, I just thank you so much for coming. Thank you for God bless you. Me. God bless you too. Y'all, the one and only Andre Jones. We're now going to uh, watch a video by Pastor Antoine Hutchins, who is the pastor of Christian Unity Baptist Church in Waldorf, Maryland. This is titled, He'll Make It All Right. What was that? Enjoy. What was that? Yeah. I remember that recording. Problems? Looks like we're having problems with that file.
Well, this is live TV. It happens like that sometimes. Yeah. So, hey, we'll just pick it up from where we left off. Let's talk production. Let's talk production. Let's talk production. Um, who are some of your favorite producers? Right now, my favorite producers, well, my favorite producers are, of course, gospel producers. Um, right now, my favorite of all time, well, not all time, but, you know, my favorite, my biggest influence would have to be the one and only Mike Burrell. Oh, he's awesome. JDI, all that stuff. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Norman Hutchins, him, Jason White, uh, Justin Savage is one of my favorites as well. You know, he produced Anthony. Justin, Brown. yeah, he's he's just talented. You know? I remember Justin back in the Baltimore days when he was playing for uh, when he was MD and um, Jonathan Nelson's products. Mm -hmm. And in fact, back in that day, Jonathan Nelson and I had the same manager, so I was I was interacting with him, you know, a lot in that time. He was just getting started. He was a school teacher. And uh, and uh, that Fab Five they had down there uh, is was is awesome uh, with Mike Reed Jr. Mike Reed, Kenny, Kenny Shelton. He's a, Kenny Shelton is another one of my favorite producers. Oh my so God, he's awesome. Kenny is definitely. He, he like, is a wonder on that organ, and you know, and Kenny. and and, and um, I just saw him not too long ago in Baltimore. He had just won a, a DMV award that they had in Baltimore. He got a production group, and uh, it was just and a, he music. Uh, yeah, it was just a pleasure to see him. Um, also. Um, Adam on the bass. Mm -hmm. That whole that whole team is awesome. Uh, and Mike Reed Jr. played my first recording. I mean, he, I didn't. I, should, I, sh I shouldn't say it that way. He and I played uh, his first recording together with his father, Mike Reed Sr. It was the uh, Ark of Safety Christian Church. Wow. Mike was 12 years old, and um, I MD'd the recording, and he played the drums, and he was hollering, Hey, man, come on, come on, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sound like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but, uh, what, I mean, but who Mike is now, I mean, he is just... Yeah, man, he's a phenomenal drummer, man. He is phenomenal. He's out with Rihanna right now. Yeah, yeah, I mean... He's really doing he, a lot of things. He's major. And he's easy to talk to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping to have him um, here um, at the next fellowship that we have um, because um, he is a success story out of this area. And he has gone through so much um, as a young man. You know, I've, I've, you know I've, I've been friends with him for a long time and have mentored him in some way. Um, and, and just watching him uh, matriculate through all of this and he's going through to be the success that he is now yeah, is just is just phenomenal. Uh, and that whole band, I mean, that whole Baltimore crew. So let's talk production. Um, you just did the uh, live recording with Jimmy Russell. Yes. And uh, and Jimmy, I know you're watching. Congratulations to you. We we all love you. If anybody in love DMV, you, Unc. if anybody in the DMV area does not love Jimmy Russell, then they don't love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the Jimmy ain't done nothing wrong to nobody. If he has, he's, he's definitely uh, apologized for it. But he ain't done wrong with nobody. And what was that process like? Uh, MD and his recording, Listen. and just MD and a recording period. Well, MD and the live recording is is easier said than done. Yeah, know? absolutely. Definitely. So you know, first thing is you know, MD and a recording is when you have to get the unit together. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely like, I was the MD for like the music portion, but Van Sean definitely put the band together. Well, Jimmy technically did, because Jimmy wanted who he wanted. Right, and right. He got who he wanted. So. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's going to win now. <laughs> <laughs> so putting the band together and like having six different elements who play six different sounds, you know. Right, right. Trying to put that together. So, you know, I made little reference tracks or whatever so we could have like templates to listen to. When it came to rehearsals, you know. Y'all know about the long rehearsal process for a lot right, of recordings. So right, right, We did late night rehearsals. Right. So we would be in there from like 10 to 3, maybe like 10 to 4 sometimes. Mm hmm So like it would be late night rehearsals and like just trying to gel, just trying to lock everything together. Like the music, the music process was not, not really difficult. It was pretty much easy because I know what Jimmy wanted. Like, even still, like, even after we rehearse, you know, Jimmy would come in and try to, you know, that's what artists do. They come mm -hmm. in and make Absolutely. Changes. Yeah, we do that. You know, sometimes it's a headache. Mm -hmm. But when it's over, you know, it was all worth it. So, so that's definitely a process. So, it's definitely a long process. So, like, right. that's what I tell y'all. Y'all don't, y'all don't see that side of stuff when you want to do this live recording and you want to be on this record. Same right. thing with JJ's record. Like, we actually rehearsed for a whole week up to that and, like, we had one rehearsal with the singers, and that was the day pretty much up before the recording. It's like a sound check situation. And, like, even still, like, changes happen. Like, you deserve it. You know, it just, you deserve it. When people don't know, like, 
I'm not gonna say it wasn't supposed to be recorded, right. but it was just a filler for the record because it was supposed to be a 15 year reunion record and just with all the hits on it. Right. And so he just decided to add that song to it. And oh, man, it took off. Hey, you deserve <laughs> it. It took off. It's a monster hit. And you know, I've heard stories after stories. When I did, I love the Lord. Um, I just recorded. I just, you know, I just did a. Um, live video i had no intention of release or re-releasing that song <laughs> and i had did the song from the storm album and i said something is missing on this album and i went back and grabbed that song from five years ago that was actually yeah, recording done five years ago that my man um brad bearwall recorded and mixed and massive brad. Big, big shout out to brad brad is a, is a great guy who has served a lot of dmv and i'm hoping to have him on this show as well if i can pull him out of that studio <laughs> Uh, but because Brad has a story to tell, we want to hear it. Brad is great. Yeah, Brad is awesome. Awesome. Um, do we have that last video uh, by Robert Person? A few of my favorite things. I'd like to pull that up before we go to our last guest. But I want to ask you. I want to ask you one last question. Um, social life. Social life. You as a musician, as a producer, as a person who's traveled to Italy, do you have time for social life? Yes actually do have time for social life. That's good. Like, music music is a 24-7 thing, but you still got to have a life. Amen. You, know, you still got to have a Amen. life. Amen. Like, spend time, you know, have a girlfriend. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to have a girlfriend right now. And, like, have friends and hang out with friends and stuff like that. You know, you still got to be able to do that. You still got to balance the two. Amen. And that's what a lot of people fail to do. Well, man, thank you for spending the extra time. I won't. I forgive you for having the Eagles jacket on. You know, you could have on a, you know, a hey, Wizards man. jacket or something like that. But you know, we you on know. the winning side. No, I, 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 yeah, I mean, right yeah, for the first time, you know, for the first time since you've been born. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go to a few of my favorite things by Robert Person. We'll be right back.
dresses with blue satin sashes Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes Silver white winters that melt into spring These are a few of my favorite things When the dog bites, when the bee stings When I'm feeling sad I simply remember my favorite things Done at Studio 51 and uh, owner Brad Bearwald and Robert is just a phenomenal guy. I wanted to mention that Andre Jones is also being honored at our DMV Musicians and Singers Fellowship on January the 22nd. We still have tickets available. You can go to www.buygospel.com. That's www.buygospel.com to purchase your tickets. Uh, we sold out of our first venue, and we had to find a bigger one. So you can uh, log on and get all that information. But please join us as we honor some well-deserving individuals from our DMV community. Well, right now, I have my friend and my brother, but he's also my pastor. Uh, he is my first producer. Uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> we recorded my first album at the First Baptist Church of North Brentwood, and we finished all the post-production in his garage in 1997. Yeah. So uh, he is Pastor Terry White, uh, pastor of the, the Fellowship Center in Bellsville, Maryland, where uh, I am a member, and um, I'm, I'm a proud member of that church. It's, it's a small church, but we're big in spirit. Amen. Uh, he's a former uh, Dallas Cowboy and Philadelphia Eagle. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to make of that, but he is. <laughs> Uh, he is also the owner of his own, his own State Farm subsidiary office uh, in Washington, D.C., so he's also a successful businessman. And so I just want to thank you, Pastor White, for coming in and joining us. Thank you for having me, Phil. How thank you doing? You. I'm doing wonderful, brother. You my buddy. My we talk all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Remember back in the day uh, in the recording studio trying to make something happen? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> did, Two, three, four. And you like also more. did work for Patrick <laughs> Lundy, and uh, yes. we had Willie Blunt in there. We had a lot of people come through and that studio King, back Mark, in the day. Mark Williams, all yeah, of them. absolutely. Wife, you name we it. was all that's trying to do right. something. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's right. <laughs> so I mean, how is it being a pastor now? I mean, you you've gone you've gone into this. The Lord has called you to this field. You you all you've often shared with me. You did not want to do this, but how yes. you know? Explain that yes. process. Well, the process. The process. My opinion is if you're truly a pastor, it takes time to accept the call. I don't know very many folks who said, yes, here I am, I, you know, here I am, take me, do it, I'm ready, I've been waiting on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was certainly the, the one who said, no, I don't think you got the right Terry. I'm, I'm looking my name up and I see there's a lot of Terry Whites in there. You probably got the wrong one, Lord. Let's, let's double check your records. And so it was a process of me uh, submitting myself to him. I, I fought it. I ran from it. I, I, Vividly denied and vividly opposed, and it just happened overnight. It, it was a metamorphism that happened probably in four years. Four years later, I'll never forget the day that I stood in front of the congregation. I said, <laughs> well, you all been asking for a pastor. Yep. I have a very important announcement to make today. I've accepted the call to be your pastor. And wow. The, 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 um, the AV director came up to me after service and says, wow, I really feel like I have a pastor now. <laughs> So I don't wow. know what happened in the transformation in his eyes or his perception, mm -hmm. but obviously my fight, stop fighting it and my, my resistance to it came to a point where I accepted it and said, okay, Lord, you practiced me through the sport of football as a 35-year coach, and some of the principles are similar. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing uh, that God will prepare you, oh, yeah. and you don't even know he's preparing you. Know. Don't even have a clue. And for 35 years, I cared for families through the individual children and high schoolers I so primarily work with high schoolers. You know, when you're dealing with, you know, as a teacher, you, when you deal with students, you deal with family. Right. And you deal with issues, and you deal with drama, and you deal with counsel. I mean, you become the counselor, the, the, the pseudo-father, the, the surrogate, everybody. I mean, your roles just expand. And as a 35-year football coach, I think God had already set it up. I just didn't see the parallel or the connection between the training and the pastor piece. We never do. Never do. <laughs> we know we have some gifts, but we right. never see, you exactly. know. 
He Thank often you. gives us the vision without the details. Amen. And Amen. so, uh, you Amen. know, I've experienced that in my own life. I know some of y'all probably saying, my God, listen to this man speak. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the voice of an angel. Uh, you also do radio voiceovers. Uh, you are also a singer. Yeah. used to sing with Patrick Lundy in the yes, Ministers of Music. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, used to sing with the King's Men at Ebenezer yes. AME. Yes. Uh, so let's just trade voices. I mean, you just go in and just <laughs> do a, tr a holy transfer right now. But so uh, tell me about running a, a, a pastoring a small church. I mean, in the DMV area where there's so much competition, uh, so many big eyes and little U's. And, uh, I mean, how is I mean, how do you pastor a small church, and what is the, what is the biggest challenge you face right now? How do you pastor a small church? Well, you know, I think small is relative, and mm -hmm. it, it can be. Uh, construed very differently depending on who you talk to. Uh, I don't, you know, there's a song that uh, the, the writer wrote said, uh, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Absolutely. And I believe no matter how small a congregation or uh, uh, size of a church in numerical numbers, you know, in terms of people, the ministry can be large. Mm -hmm. I often tell the folk, uh, we're a hundred or less, and I tell the folks, you know, just because we're a small congregation doesn't mean we're going to do small things because God absolutely. doesn't operate in small. Absolutely. He, he, he absolutely operates in miraculous and mm -hmm. large things. So um, my I grew up uh, in, a, in a Southern Baptist church as a young child. And when we moved to Delaware during the civil rights time period, dating myself, right, um, my mother was not concerned about the size or the magnitude or the, all the ambits of a church. She was concerned about us getting what we needed spiritually. So we never found ourselves attracting to churches that were, you know, large and where everybody said, that's where you want to be. Uh, she just was concerned about our spiritual development. So I grew up with that attitude that it doesn't matter where I went. I just needed to get what I needed. And as a child, you don't really know. You just go, you go, you go. But I always kept that small, intimate feeling that we had in, in Georgia where we, we grew up. Our church was on a uh, plantation, as many churches in the wow. south of Georgia were. Yeah. And... Um, it was a little little white church. It looks like something out of the uh, movies in a slave movie, and it was the, it was a, it was a community center. It was a dance hall. It was the it was the it was the church. It was a, it was the, it was the what schoolhouse. It, it was what it needed to Whatever be. Whatever it needed to be. That's what it was. So I grew up with the same kind of concepts, and like I said, I did not ever anticipate, plan, want it to be a pastor. But once I accepted it, I realized I, I, my understanding of what church really meant was we are the church. Bible Absolutely. tells us that we physically are the church. So the building is just a place you operate in, much like my home church in Georgia. So I didn't get caught up in, do we need to run out and get a big mortgage and get a big building and try to get people? My goal was to try to build the bigness in people through the church that's in them, not the building. The building is just a place where we come and develop people and try to establish the, the connection and relationship and develop that relationship with God. Beyond that, beyond the walls, we probably impact more more people than you would have ever would ever imagine because of the the, the, the outreach that we do, we don't focus on growing inside. If it's going to grow, I always say God's going to grow it, you know, numbers-wise, numbers-wise. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is, is, is musicians, <laughs> um, getting the quality musicians, and not necessarily quality because we have had some quality musicians come through. Um, we had uh, Sister Clark came through and did a, a program for us, which was amazing because when people saw it on the Facebook, I got calls saying, how did you afford a red Clark Brown coming, you know, Brown Clark's coming mm -hmm. to your building and you're mm -hmm. just, you're not even 100 people strong. Well, God does big things through small situations. Amen. And, and like That's I said, he, word. He, if he fed multitudes with a little fish and a couple pieces of bread, he can make a church do things out in the community larger than the church could ever be size wise. So we don't, we're not focused and we teach that. We teach that we are the church. The building is where you come get yourself developed. Get yourself prepared, get yourself spiritually ready, and fit, kind of like the football field. Right. Amen. And that's what's unique so. about you because you still operate a football program Absolutely. outside of the church, outside Absolutely. of your business. It's ministry. Talk about that. I mean, how's your team doing? I've never had a losing season. <laughs> that's I awesome. I don't, I don't believe God operates in losing. Now, you may have some challenges, <laughs> much like uh, Paul and all the rest of them. Right, right. And you know, Moses, everybody has some challenges. So for me, I've had challenges as a coach, but we, we don't believe in losing. I don't I practice losing. I don't teach losing. I've had people say to me, is winning the only thing to you? No, absolutely not. But, but developing the spirit of win. You know, the Bible right. says fly like an eagle. And mm -hmm. I will mount up. It didn't say mount up to get beat down. <laughs> it said mount up to fly over. So to the eagles, you sometimes you have to fly over right, the, the right. obstacles that, that, that life challenges and brings you. 
So we, we have a, a spring program that we started some back in 2010 developmental program where we take youngsters and we use this as a, as a vehicle that this is why I said God had prepared me for this church thing um, we use football as a means even back in 1983 when I first started we did power scriptures if you didn't know the scripture the team ran is that right the, the team, team ran. ran my God the team ran. Jesus wept coming day. up every time <laughs> <laughs> so to this day you know people that know me the parents that know me I had one uh, parent saw me in the giant uh, about a month ago and they said, I want to always tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, you know, I heard you were pastoring a church. And I said, yeah, yeah. He says, can I tell you what I honestly always felt? You were a pastor to my son. He wrote you a letter and said, thank you for introducing God to him when he was only 13 years old. Wow. And Praise that was because of one simple little scripture. One of my favorite scriptures for the young is Romans 8, 28. Yeah. All things. All things. Don't worry about if it gets tough in the game. Don't worry about if... If, 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 if your number one quarterback gets knocked out, just bring it next man up. Next man is the best. How is it, um, I mean, how do you navigate being a pastor and a business owner, your family man, uh, Doris, your wife Doris is one of my favorites on this earth. Thank you. And, you know, Thank your children, you. I, I spent a lot of time with you, you know, with mm -hmm. TJ and I know Tara. And seven uh, grandchildren. And seven grandchildren. <laughs> I mean, how do you navigate all this? Well, I, my man said it earlier, balance. Balance. If one of the first things I try to teach, especially new congress, is you come to church and church becomes your life. Ministry becomes number one. You're out of order. That's not wow. even biblical. Wow. That's not even biblical. The, the God I serve says family first. Amen. So if your family, if you're, if you're not doing well at home, if you can't clean your home, you can't come clean the church. <laughs> if you can't take care of home, you can't take care of pretty much wow. anything. So the bottom line is for us in our house, in our church house, everybody is taught, make certain we prioritize. Your family has to be first. To, to teach that. As you know, the men, we try to tell the brothers, you are the priest, whether you want that role or not, you're the priest of your household. Right. And that queen that God gave you, you got to make certain that she's happy because if the queen ain't happy, the king ain't happy. And the My priest, God, the happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it's something I've learned over the years. In my, in my latter years, I really feel like I have that in, in, in order because, I, I, and again, I teach this conceptually. You must have that relationship. And, and, and forgive me if it sounds like I'm, I'm kind of all over the place with religion, but I'm not. I just believe whatever religion you serve, they all tend to talk about that relationship with your God first. Mm -hmm. After that, family. Right. Not ministry. Mm -hmm. Not a deacon, not a trustee, mm -hmm. not even a pastor. Mm -hmm. I can't be a pastor if I can't be a godly man with a relationship with God first. Absolutely. And if I'm married, which I am, if I put God with a ministry, not God, the ministry, the work, mm -hmm. you know, the work. I tell folks, go home. I tell folks, don't come every time the door is open. <laughs> Go home and handle your business, and then come see us. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Real quickly, uh, who's going to the Super Bowl? As much as I would like to say the Eagles, <laughs> as much as I would like to have seen the Cowboys, um, <clears throat> realistically, it's my desire. So I'm going to go with my desire uh -huh. and, and my heart. I agree with Coach Moody, one of my assistants of the program. When you were embarrassed as badly as Atlanta Falcons were last year, you're supposed to find a way to win. I got you. I don't care what it takes. If you got to pay somebody, if you got to buy a new player today at the game, whatever it takes, you have to redeem what happened last year. That's Brady. right. That's right. So I'm going with the fact that the most unbelievable team that would nobody believes they can do it because of how they got punished last year from the major comeback of all time. Right. The history of football. I'm going to put my money on, on the Falcons just to, just to pray and hope that they can redeem because nobody should have ever experienced what they experienced last year. What about the AFC? AFC, I like Pittsburgh. Like Pittsburgh? You think Pittsburgh's going to get past New England? I, let me tell you something. Pittsburgh can beat New England any day of the week when they put it all together. Right, Between right. Mike Tomlin's energy level, mm -hmm. his leadership, his coaching ability, and them players, they got players. Big Ben's a little aged, but they has they still have a team to beat. I wow. believe they can get after Brady. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless you. Hope you can come back and, you know, I love you too. Hope you can come back and co-host the show with me. Or whatever you know, whatever go, God you tells me to do, you know, I'll be doing it. You the man. <laughs> Amen. Keep us together Amen. and keep yes, us healthy yes, so we can continue Likewise. to do his work. Thank you all for joining us today. I want to offer this final thought 
uh, my former pastor, the Reverend B. Kevin Smalls, who is now in Detroit, uh, was pastor of the Queens Chapel United Methodist Church. And I want to leave you with this thought. He said, you have heard that there is nothing new under the sun. Amen. But God is not under the sun. <laughs> and so good, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. And we are constantly asking God to renew our minds. And so I pray that this message, uh, we thank all of our guests being here today. And uh, um, Reverend Allen, Andre Jones, and Pastor Terry, Pastor Terry White, I hope you have learned something. I certainly have. I've been blessed by this broadcast. And we hope to see you on the next episode of Real Talk with Philip Carter. God bless you and have a great week. And be safe out here in this weather. For more information on how to become a guest on Real Talk with Philip Carter or for general inquiries, please email us at realtalkwithphilipcarter at yahoo.com. Tune in next Monday for another edition of Real Talk with Philip Carter.